Welcome back to the prediction series where the best teams from across the world and also North America are there are looking for the World Championship Trophy. We are entering the second half of the group stage where everything is make or break. They're looking for the knockout stages here. Some teams are striving forward unexpectedly, as well as others are just kind of doing what we expected, dying miserably. Rip LCS. Anyway, let's go over last week's results. I'm not going to go through all of them individually. Let's just give the roundabout total 13 out of 24. It's a net positive of over 50%. That's what I'm going to say. It was a bit of a hard one, considering I predicted some NA wins. You know, we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, going to be honest, it's kind of been okay. I've enjoyed World so far for predictions. So let's just get into day one of the second half. So for this second half of the video, we're going to be talking day by day in each clip and I'll quickly run through my predictions before we talk about each team and how they're living up to their world success right now. So game one, Fnatic versus C9, I've gone with Fnatic winning. T1, Fnatic, I've gone T1. C9, EDG, I've gone EDG. Fnatic, EDG, I've gone EDG. T1, C9, I've gone T1, and EDG versus T1, I have gone EDG. If my math is correct, that should put us with T1 and EDG topping the groups and making it into knockout stages. Let's be honest, this group A is the most open group, I believe, where all four teams can actually make it out. C9 still has a chance somehow. They need to win every single game and have other results go their way, I believe. But I'm going to be honest, I do not think C9 will pick up a win in this group. Fnatic stepped up and showcased their strength day one. It was pretty dominant from the European squad. And I am honestly have been enjoying how Fnatic have played group stage. They're picking up tempo in how they perform and you've got to give a lot of credit to Humanoid for how well they've done. I honestly do think the predictions for Fnatic in this group is kind of hard to do, especially against T1 and EDG, with some very close games between these two teams. I'm going to be honest, this could be Fnatic making it out of groups into knockout stages. But again, it's a toss up. I would say, personally, they could come out second behind one of these two teams, and then the third being in third. It's hit or miss, though. And that's personally why this group is so free. As for T1 and EDG, they're kind of living up to my expectations. T1, bear in mind, did just get to the MSI finals literally half a split ago the meta hasn't really changed that much other than the fact that zeri and siva no longer really matter in fact zeri got nerfed to non-existence here at worlds wish i could say the same for yumi <laughs> but yeah this group's been very competitive and honestly very enjoyable to watch it's just now which teams will make it forward. I've gone with T1 and EDG. Others may go a different, but let's move into day two. Day two, let's get into it. G2 EG, I've gone G2. EG JDG, it's very obvious I've gone JDG. Dam 1 versus G2, I've gone G2. G2 versus JDG, I've gone JDG. EG versus Dam 1, I've gone Dam 1, and JDG versus Dam 1, I have gone JDG. So, this group, we're not even going to discuss Evil Geniuses. Well, sure, they've had, I would say, the best at it 
of the North American teams, they're basically in a death group and they're not going to make it out. Let's be honest for us. Here, this realistically, I can talk about ED, EG here in a sense that of the LCS teams, they were the closest in this group stage to breaking a tier 2 turret. No one has broken a tier 2 turret yet for North America. That's damning stats. I know that's just one stat out of many. But that just tells me they get demolished in the mid game and then lose out late. No one is really going. I do mean going late with EG. They're beating them in the early game or outscaling them beyond a measurable belief. I feel that teams, like North America especially, they'll draft okay, but they lose their comp. They don't secure enough vision for themselves around objectives. Objective control is a huge thing I need to talk about with EG. They brought out a Nidalee in their matchup, I believe, against G2. Inspired just farmed all game, but he didn't control the major objectives too well, which meant Yankos just demolished late. He went invaded in certain aspects, Inspired's jungle to make the big plays, and that's why I've got G2 finishing above EG. Now, if you can't tell by how I predicted this, I think G2 is going to be the first or second seed, I should say, out of Group B. JDG are untouchable in this group. They've not been really challenged. They've had some close edits, but not close enough, I would say. G2 made them sweat for quite the majority of the game until JDG just found the angle with a Yumi for in a fight they realistically should not have won. Spiral alert, ban Yumi. That's my methodology here for NA here in this group, as well as G2. This champion should not be allowed into the rift. It's broken and it realistically needs a nerf. In fact, it needs just taken out of competitive play personally. If you have crowds cheering for it to be when it's banned, Anyway, I think JDG perf uh, probably one of the teams I think will make it to the semis. The other one we'll get to in a few bits, but they've performed excellently here at Worlds. And G2, they're surviving this group, I feel. Damn one. Damn one's a knobball team. In the sense that they have good games and then they have them really terrible ones that we see that just are unexplainable. That's how I feel that Dan One have played here at Worlds, but they're still winning and doing okay. Now, that's this group pretty much discussed, but don't be surprised in my opinion if there isn't tiebreakers. I could see G2 playing a tiebreaker against Dan One. Anyway, let's move into the next group. Day three, let's go into these predictions. Rogue Gam, I've gone with Rogue. Gam versus Top, I've gone with Top. Rogue versus DRX, I've gone with Rogue. DRX versus Gam, I've gone with DRX. And then the two top games to round out day number three, I have gone with Top in both, let's just be honest. So, group C. Is the interesting one because it's LEC dominant right now. Rogue sitting atop 3 0. And I just need to say, Maorang's been playing some pretty whack picks in terms of his Javan and Lee Sin to get them through games. He's just been the heavy engager with Odo top lane tank. That's as simple as it goes. You've then had Trimby engaging and then two stable carries. That's how Rogue have played every single game so far. And it's been 
pretty hard to beat. Mao Rang's pathing is just nuts. He's been finding flanks that are just unexpected. His kick on Jackie Love in yesterday's game against Top. Yes, spoiler alert, I'm recording it day after. It just absolutely dismantled Top. Gave Rogue a Baron and then the inevitable win in that game. He played phenomenal and so did Trimby. This man has stepped up. He's probably the best support in the world at Worlds. That's a huge statement to make here because he's just been going crazy on these engage picks. Now, teams are going to struggle to beat Rogue because they will not waste bans into a Mal- Well, they'll waste a ban on a Maokai. They probably won't waste a ban on an Orn or another ink tank top. Odo's probably got quite a few in his pool right now that are there. Scion I could probably think of even though it's not that strong. But he could even pivot to an Aatrox. Rogue can play very bulky slash tanky tops freely. That's a given here at Worlds. It's just shutting down this comp which is very hard to do considering Maorang has found success on Lee Sin. Rogue are very hard to beat, in my opinion here, and could very easily just 6-0 this group. That be a shocker, I know, if they beat top again in a very close series, uh, well, game, I'm used to saying series from the best of fives. But the other teams, top, I was surprised lost to DRX. I'm not going to lie there. I thought Top would beat DRX. And that's partly down to just regional success of Top. They did very well during the best of threes during the regular season. It was only in playoffs where they faltered. And it's honestly Jackie Love who I think has had a bit of a weird one here at Worlds. He's been caught out quite a bit, especially in the Rogue game, but against DRX he got caught out a, a lot. Wayward's had his on-off moments in his game so far, and realistically, he wasn't shining as the top laner we expect. Personally, if you get him off the Nar, put him on something like a Fiora, we could actually see some aggression in the top lane for top that could lead to them topping this group. I've just said top too many times and I hate it. But yeah, top doing okay. I think they'll be top two with Rogue now. I wouldn't have said Rogue were top two, I would have said DRX. And speaking of DRX, they're doing okay. I mean, I didn't expect them to be top as I've just said. I expected it to be close with Rogue, but I've underestimated Rogue heavily in this group. And that's a shocker to me because I expect Rogue to fail. They failed last year. I expect them to kind of panic against other international teams. And DRX, they've just been consistent throughout this World Championship. They did great during the uh, play-ins. They've come into the group stage and I could see them go in top two realistically I think Rogue need to win one more game and then they're top two guaranteed it's very hard to say though anywho let's move into GAM I'll quickly just say this yikes I think I have overestimated this league the Gigabyte Marines of old were very strong and personally here they've not looked the best maybe that's just because I haven't seen them in such a long time and expected more and in fact I kind of expected more considering the fact that they've not had any international experience in over what three years now two years this is their first tournament and other regions other teams as well have had more time 
at a world championship and or at MSI. Gam are just getting into it and I think that's kind of a big thing to note because it's going to probably cause a bit of a shake-up for the VCS and that's something I really want to see. But Group C out the way, let's move into Group D. Group D and four teams remain to be covered in this video. 100 Thieves versus CFO, I've gone with CFO. CFO, Gen G, I've gone with Gen G. RNG, 100 Thieves, I've gone RNG. And Gen G versus 100 Thieves, I've gone Gen G. CFO versus RNG, I've gone CFO. And RNG versus Gen G to round out the group, I have gone with Gen G. This group's interesting to me because RNG are doing what I expected DRX to do in the previous group. Absolutely dominate. And personally, I thought 100 Thieves would do a bit better, but the games that I've watched of theirs so far in groups, they've just looked flat. It's like you buy a fizzy drink because of the fizz and the taste and the explosion in your mouth. There's nothing there. Sunday is the only one I've seen do decently in the lame phase. It's just been very quiet though for this team and you kind of have to think what do we need to do if we are 100 Thieves to get a win? And I honestly think their loss to the CFO, the Flying Oysters, really put a damper in this squad. They've not had the same energy for the rest of their games and I'm honestly thinking it's down to their own self-belief and their own hype. It's blindness. When we watched the World Group Tour, they did not care about CFO. And then CFO here show up as PCS's first seed and batter them. CFO have been the second place squad from the PCS from their existence. They came into the league this year and they've just been dominant as a roster. They've built up a teams and players who have been to us before and you can see it in how they've played here. Dominating Hunter Thieves in a very convincing fashion. Now, I've gone for later on in my predictions a CFO win over RNG. You probably think, that seems a bit dumb. But RNG, for some reason, have that odd tendency to throw away games in a group stage. I just think that might be the game they throw. And CFO probably are the team to do it. I can't see a Hunter Thieves unless they have a renewed lease of life for the second half, it's not going to happen. Let's talk Gen G though. They got battered by RNG day one, which was a surprise to me. And realistically, this group has been very LCK LPL dominant. And you realistically think, eh, what if? What if? Gen G beat RNG. We're definitely getting a tiebreaker. That's how I see this group being. They're almost certainly going to have a tiebreaker matchup between the two squads. And you know, it's going to be funny because quite easily there could be damn one JDG, DRX, I guess tops there, but T1 definitely and E D G all LPL and LCK teams making it out of groups. There's that possibility still. And while Group C Top Esports being the struggling team in terms of the Eastern teams, it's still a heavy shot if Rogue crumble in Group C. But personally this is a huge personally. I expect us to actually see a couple more LEC teams, a few LCK, 
and then a few LPL teams making it into knockout stages. That's just my humble opinion. I know Rogue technically only need to win one game, and they're there. I think it's only one game. Yeah, they only need to win one game, and there's the guarantee of a tiebreaker against top. That's pretty big, because you're guaranteed top two then. So yet, yeah, any team that's 3-0 needs to win one game. I'm pretty sure that's the results, yeah. Any team that's on three gets that. There's only three teams on that, and that's Rogue, RNG, and JDG. Group A is going to be the fun one. But if you can't tell, I am winding down this video. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to Group A kicking off on Thursday. So... With this all said and done, thank you very much for joining me for these predictions. If you have enjoyed this video, leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new into here or if you want to, and I will see you guys next time for the Rogue vs. Gam Team Vibrate Down. Peace out.